Hello, welcome to New Covenant University. My name is Dr. Carlos Molina, and today we'll be studying together Origins of the Bible, or THY250, as outlined in your course requirements. There will be a handout, uh, a link with a handout underneath the video for you to uh, download and keep and follow along. Also, I would like to encourage you to take your own notes as we progress along the lecture today. When we talk about the Bible, let's get right into the subject. What is the Bible? The word Bible, it's a word that has been uh, translated as book or encyclopedia. So when we talk about the Bible, we're talking about a collection of books, books that were put together in one volume. And that's one of the most important things we need to remind ourselves, that our Bible is a collection of books. The Bible is a, a compendium or a put together of 66 different books, uh, 39 from what we call the Old Testament and 27 of what is known as the New Testament. It was written by about 40 different authors. The Bible was written by 40 different people during different periods of time. Uh, some of the writers of the Bible were kings, uh, prophets, fishermen, doctors, and just common everyday people. It took about 1600 years for the Bible to be completed from the time that it was inspired until the time that it was canonized. During that time, uh, God inspired different people from different walks of life uh, to write down the message that he wanted man to know. The Bible, uh, the Bible has a unity on its own. Even though it was written by 40 different writers, the Bible contains one message, and the Bible contains a unity that is woven throughout the entire reading of the Bible. Whether you read from Genesis to Revelation, you're going to find consistency, coherence, and unity in the Bible. Several years ago, uh, the Bible was downloaded into a computer. A university conducted a study, and during that time, after the Bible was downloaded, the computer analyzed the content of the entire Bible. The computer was asked, who is the author of the Bible? It took the computer about 30 seconds to print out a report. And in that report, the computer said that the Bible was written by one author. So we see the unity of the Bible in all of its writings. It doesn't matter who wrote what book, the author remains one, and that is God. We can say that the Bible is a book by God, from God, about God, to man. In the Bible, we are taught the morals of God. We can see the personality of God. We can see the thoughts of God. We can get to understand God's plan for man. And we, we also see God's message. God wrote in the Bible everything he wanted us to know. A lot of people like to read in between the lines, and some other people go beyond uh, what is known as the canonized scripture. And uh, sometimes we can get into trouble when we do that. But in talking about the Bible itself, the Bible has only one author, one writer, and the writer of the Bible is God. The Bible's unity, uh, the Bible claims, uh, makes a claim that no other book makes. The Bible claims to be the Word of God, not a work from God, but the Word of God. God himself uh, breathed the content of the Bible, meaning that God himself inspired the writers to write down all of the things that he wanted uh, to be recorded throughout history. In the original text, uh, the Bible was written in three main languages. There are three main languages throughout the entire Bible, and those languages are Aramaic, Hebrew, and Greek. The New Testament was entirely written in Greek language because it was, uh, uh, it was the accepted language at the time uh, when Jesus was born. Even though the Roman Empire was the, gover the governing power, uh, they adapted the, uh, the Greek language as the official language at that time. Uh, so there's three languages that we, uh, we can understand that the Bible was written in. It was Aramaic. Most of the uh, parts of the Old Testament were written in Aramaic. Uh, the vast majority was written in Hebrew. And then we come to the New Testament that was written entirely in the Greek language. Uh, 
The Bible was written originally in what is named uh, or called scrolls. Uh, today we see that as parchment paper. Uh, it was written in large parchments or large scrolls uh, from the skin of animals. It was later, during the invention of what is known as the Codex, that the Bible was then translated and put together sort of what in book form like we have it today. So the Codex brought about a great uh, advantage because it took all of those parchments, all of those scrolls, and brought them down, sized them, and put them in a format that it was easy to handle uh, and uh, more easily available. Uh, the Bible contains different styles of writing. The Bible is a very interesting book because the Bible contains history, but it is not a history book per se. The Bible contains poetry, but it is not a poetic book. The Bible contains music, but it is not a hymnal or a music song or a music book. The Bible contains uh, uh, records and it contains instructions of law and the Bible contains prophecy, but the Bible is none of those things. The Bible is not a book about prophecy. Uh, the Bible is not a book about law. The Bible is a book that contains all of those uh, different forms of writing in it. It's, uh, it's a very interesting book because it has a variety of thought in it and it has a variety of writing styles. And when we uh, study the Bible, we need to keep that in mind. And that's why we need to most of the time refer to the context when we're reading an account or when we're reading uh, uh, a record of something in Scripture. None of, in spite of all that, the Bible is God speaking to us. I often say that the Bible is God in written form. In the book of John, the Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So it is not, it is not wrong to think of the Bible as God in written form. And I'm not talking about the leather-bound cover or the pages. I'm talking about the content of the Bible. Uh, the Bible claims to be the inspired and inerrant Word of God which means that the Bible makes a very, very strong claim. The Bible itself claims to come from God, and the Bible also claims to be without error or mistakes. And this is something that no other book uh, claims. That's what makes the Bible such, so much more powerful and much more interesting, interesting to study. Every student of the Bible, every, every student of the Word of God, needs to know a little bit about the historical content of how the Bible came to us. After God inspired the authors, uh, the 40 different people in different uh, 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 places, in different regions of the earth, it took about 1,600 years for all of those writings to come together as we know today uh, that the Bible. So in, within the span of 1,600 years, God put together a collection of 66 books uh, that we know as the Bible, and he gave it to us as a gift. The Bible is uh, our instruction or our manual, uh, instruction manual for life, excuse me. Now, in the Old Testament, if we're talking about the divisions of the Bible, the Bible is divided in two main parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament has many divisions within itself, the first five books of the Bible are called the Pentateuch, or the books of the law. The second part is the uh, historical books, and it's, uh, it's uh, put together of 12 books uh, going from Joshua all the way to the book of Esther. Then there are five poetical books in the Old Testament, which go from the book of Job to the book of Songs of Solomon. Then there is the prophetical books, which is uh, 17 different books written by uh, major and minor prophets. All the prophets of that time, uh, and that is, the, that is the content of what is uh, called the prophetical books of the Old Testament. The New Testament is also divided in different sections as well. The New Testament contains five historical books, which are the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and also the book of Acts. Then we have... 13 books or letters written by the Apostle Paul, which are called the Pauline Epistles. And those are Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. Those are the 13 letters that Paul wrote. Then there are other nine letters, which are called the non 
Pauline epistles, which are Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, the book of Jude, and the book of Revelation. Now, some uh, Bible scholars uh, attribute the book of Hebrews to the Apostle Paul because of the style of writing, the, uh, uh, the content of the message of the letter. So it is widely accepted that Paul was the writer of the book of Hebrews. Now, the Bible, uh, like I said, the Bible claims to be God-breathed or God-inspired. Uh, no other book makes that claim, which means that God himself was involved in the process of inspiring, motivating, and helping the writers uh, write and record everything that he was telling them. During the third century, approximately, uh, Jewish scholars in the city of Alexandria uh, at the time of the dispersation, uh, a new generation of, of Jewish nationals or, or Jewish people were being born, and they had no access to many of the books of the, of the law. They had no access to the Hebrew Bible. So a group of scholars in the city of Alexandria, Jews that were living during the dispersation, the diaspora, if you, if you like to call it that way, in Egypt at that time, decided that it was necessary for the well-being of preser preserving the language and preserving their culture and their historical value and preserving, teaching also uh, the new generation of Jewish kids that were uh, being born during that time. They needed to bring the law and the understanding of the Jewish Bible uh, to them. So they decided to take it upon themselves to create the first translation of the Old Testament uh, in a non-Hebrew language or, or, in, or in, in a language other than Hebrew. And that's where the Septuagint or the first translation of the Old Testament in Greek was born. It came as a result of the Jewish people wanting to preserve the writings of the law, the writings of their history, the writings of the uh, oral tradition, the Torah and the menorah and all that stuff. Uh, they decided to put it in writing and they used the Greek language because it was the language that was being, I'm sorry, uh, yes, I'm sorry. And they decided to do it in the Greek language because it was the common language at that time. And thus we have the first translation of the Old Testament uh, around the third century approximately, and it was called the Septuagint. It was the first translation of the Old Testament, uh, not in Hebrew. Then, during the 2nd and 4th century, approximately, around the year 382, uh, one of the popes decided that uh, we needed a translation of the Bible uh, in a language of the common people. And this is very interesting. For many centuries, the Bible was kept away from uh, Christians and believers. But this time, around the year 382, one of the popes decided that we needed a copy of the Bible in the language of the people at that time. And uh, so the first translation of the complete Bible, uh, Old and New Testament, was done, and this is called as the Vulgate. The Vulgate, because Vulgate comes up, is where we get our word vulgar from, and it's not a derogatory term, it is actually a language of the people, or common language. So the first translation of the Bible in Latin was done during that time by this Pope, and it became known as the Vulgate. During the 14th century, John Wycliffe and his followers produced the first version of the entire New Testament in the English language. And that was a, a major feat to accomplish at that time. And then during the year of 1518 and 1524, approximately, Martin Luther came with his first translation of the Bible. Uh, it was published in September of 1522, and it was known as the September Bible. It was a translation work by Martin Luther himself. In the years of 1604 to 1611, the King James Bible was born, which is the Bible that we still have today, and it is the widely accepted version of the Bible in the, Eng in the English language. Uh, Forty-seven different scholars were involved in that project. They uh, edited and uh, double-checked and corroborated the translation to make sure that it was as close to the original text as possible, and uh, thus the King James Bible was born. By the 19th century, however, there were 400 translations of the entire Bible in 400 different languages around the world.
Uh, it was uh, exploding. The translation of the Bible at that time was exploding, and, and I think that it was God-inspired. I think God wanted uh, the people to have a copy of the Bible of their own so that they can go to the Word of God for themselves. So God inspired people not only to write the Bible. I personally believe that God inspired translators of the Bible to take on the project so that the Word of God will become prolific and so that everybody could get a copy of the Bible. And today, uh, 20th and 21st century, uh, different Bible societies tell us that approximately there are a thousand different versions of the Bible in more than 1,000 languages. This is very interesting because God said that his word will be preached all over the world. And this is one of the ways how the message of the gospel is going to foreign lands and is going to many parts of the world. Perhaps areas where a missionary cannot go or uh, we have not yet reached those areas by way of radio or television. But the printed page is, is a vehicle by which God can send his word to the people. So at the present, there are approximately a thousand different translations of the Bible. And all you got to do is go to, uh, to the internet, go to Google, and you can go to pages like Bible Gateway, and you can see all of the available versions of the Bible in different languages, and there's approximately more than 20, just in the English language. Now, all of this begs a question, uh, you know, it makes us ask a question, is the Bible reliable? With all these translations that are going on and, and with all these things that have happened, is the Bible reliable? Well, I can answer that as my own personal conviction. The Bible is reliable for several reasons. Number one, the Bible makes a claim that no other book makes. The Bible claims to be the inspired word of God. The Bible says that about itself, that God wrote the Bible. Second of all, uh, there are more original manuscripts of the New Testament that of any other writing in history. There are, there are approximately 25,000 original uh, copies of the original manuscripts or original manuscripts of the New Testament. 5,000 of those are original uh, bona fide manuscripts of the New Testament. And according to scholars, we have more original manuscripts of the New Testament than we have of any other piece of literature written by humans at any time in history. There are more copies of the New Testament, original copies that is, there are more original copies of the New Testament than there are of the writings of uh, Shakespeare or, or any other writer in history. And the same goes for the Old Testament. There are thousands of fragments and original manuscripts of the Old Testament. There are complete uh, manuscripts of the book of Esther. There are complete manuscripts of the book of Isaiah, uh, the book of Psalms, uh, the Songs of Solomon. There are complete, uh, uh, complete copies of the uh, book of Genesis. So if we were going to uh, answer the question, is the Bible reliable? We would have to say yes, based on the evidence that we have. And the fact that we have more original manuscript copies of the Bible than we have of any other human writing in history, we will have to answer yes. So you can rest assured that when you're reading in the New Testament, the words in red, the words of Jesus, you are actually reading the actual words that Jesus spoke uh, because, of the, uh, because of the authenticity and the abundance of original manuscripts. We can uh, rest assured and rely on the fact that our translation of the Bible is accurate and it is as close to the original language as, as they can possibly make it. Now, languages change, semantics change, and every generation has to have a copy of the Word of God in a language that they can understand. We no longer speak uh, King James English, and that's the reason why we need to have translations of the Bible in the language that we use today. So never doubt the fact that when you're reading the Bible and then you're, when you're reading the Word of God, uh, it is actually God speaking to you. Uh, it is accurate. Uh, and keep in mind that God has been inspiring this process throughout uh, the years uh, because he wants us to have this knowledge of the word of God.
I believe that every student of the Bible, every Bible student needs to have at least this much information about the origins of the Bible. Therefore, there is the lecture for you today. Keep in mind the most important points. The Bible was written by 40 different writers in different periods of time in different places on earth. It took approximately 1,600 years for the Bible to be completed and canonized and put in book form and delivered to us. There were major translations at that time, and we have more historical evidence and original manuscripts of the Bible and the New Testament today than we have of any other human writing in history. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson, and we hope to see you in the next one. Remember, this is Dr. Carlos Molina in behalf of New Covenant University, and this was THY 250, Origins of the Bible.